God damn it. Excuse me, sis. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. You know, it's not really your books I love. It's the fact that you're the only client who's always on time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So anyway, now Brimley Books are offering the most money up front, but they want the rights to this, your next book. Tom. Yes? What? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I don't know if I feel comfortable locking us in like that. I mean, it may very well be that Arrow is prepared to pay a much larger than Dreams, they're not real. Just dreams. It's just an imagination, Doc. It's how she writes her books. It's like she sees the stories in her mind or something. Yeah, maybe in the beginning. This time, her imagination's gone too far. You see, what you and your wife have got to face up to is the enormous pressure she's under as a best-selling author. Hey, do you want one? No, thanks. Doc, this is kind of coming at a bad time. I'm for Marie. She's got a deadline coming up on her new book, and it's, it's kind of important to No, her. no, no. That's not important. What is important is her state of mind. Her health should be your concern. It is my concern. I just meant... Look, what do you suggest that we do, huh? I mean, she can't just shut her mind off like a light. No. She could turn it down. She needs to get away from all this excitement for a while. She needs a rest. And that means no work. Dr. Robinson she needs to go somewhere where her imagination won't be stimulated. All right. All right, I'll, uh, I'll find some place. Thanks. Look at this. Hey. <laughs> What's that? That is where you're driving me. It's almost terminally quaint, isn't it? Oh, it looks great to you. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Richard found it. Actually, I think he did it for Pierre. Isn't that right, baby? Ah, oh, Tom, smell that air. Can you believe this? Ah, oh, I should have done this months ago, you know what? It'll be good for you two to get away together. Yep. It's what our marriage needs at the moment. How long are you going to be away for? Three whole weeks. Richard's going to be driving back and forth to L.A., though. He's up for a big design job, did I tell you? Oh. Ah, he really needs this. I hope he gets it. He's been on such a downer lately. This would be great for him. Do you need any company while he's gone? <laughs> no way! You'd have me trying to write all the time. Forget about it. 
Well, I was just trying to be helpful. Yeah, well, you've done enough already. Thank you very much. Mind the moose. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Could be left, could be right. Now what did I do? I don't know. It sure the hell wasn't speeding. Well now. Just where is it we're trying to get to? Good afternoon, officer. We're trying to find Drago. Drago, huh? Yeah, she and her husband are renting a cottage there. You staying here too? No, I'm a friend giving her a ride. Well, friend, you head on right. A little ways along, there's a break to her left. Now, you take that. But if you get to the town, you're going too far. Thank you, officer. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> hey, baby. Hi. Tom. What a surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Yeah, it was a last-minute thing. Very cool to say goodbye. Tom politely volunteered. Knowing I'd say no, of course, so I said yes. <laughs> well, wasn't that nice of you, Tom? But look, can I get you a glass of champagne or something? Uh, look, don't worry. I gotta get going back to LA. I mean, who knows if I drink and drive? I'll never find my way back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you just stay here tonight? I mean, it looks like we have plenty of room. Look, Marie, sure... he's gotta get back. Tom's gotta get back, right? Look, uh, I'll see you when you get back in L.A. You two have a good time. You take care of her. Don't worry, buddy. I will. Look, if you need anything, just give me a call. Huh? Yes, sir. No. I mean it. I'll be fine, okay? I'll pin your number up on the wall just in case. <laughs> of course, we don't have a phone, but... See ya. Drive safe. So what do you think? It's perfect. It's really strange.
like time stood still, isn't it? Where's all the kids and the, the barking dogs and... I don't know. Maybe they all went fishing. Very beautiful, aren't they? Have you seen anything you like? These are interesting. Who's the artist? Me. These, these are all mine. You're the couple staying at the cottage. Yeah, how did you know? News travels fast in a small town. Oh. Well, hi. I'm Marie. This is my husband, Richard. I'm Eleanor. Well, we came into town for some groceries, but I'd like to come back another time and get some materials. Painting is a passion of mine, too. I'm says store is just across the way. Thank you. You have a nice shop. Oh, please stop by again when you have more time. <sighs> Wolf in sheep's clothing, eh? She's probably like that to everybody. Yeah. You remember that, and you won't go wrong. Are you jealous? <laughs> what, of a flirtatious shopkeeper? Give me a break. Uh, should I be? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Visitors, Mr. O. I hear him, Mrs. O. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Howdy, howdy. You must be the new couple rounding Wilderness Cottage, right? Here in your honeymoon? More of a second honeymoon. Oh. oh. Uh, we uh, need a couple of things here. Oh. All right. Oh. Well, this is quite a list you have here. So uh, why don't you and me go get the things and have the ladies get acquainted? Great. OK. Want to sit down, dear? You'll be wanting to know what goes on in these parts. Well, not much. Folks keep pretty much to themselves around here. We live our lives, mind our own business. Except for me, I mind everybody's business. <gasps> Morning, Sheriff. Your cigarettes are on the counter. always that friendly? Hmm, had a little run-in with him yesterday, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the sheriff can be a little surly, but he's a good man to have on your side when trouble comes knocking. How did you know I met the sheriff yesterday? Oh, everybody knows everything about About everybody, everybody around, around here. here, right.
disappeared. He's been missing all day. Marie, he is a dog. He's probably out in the woods chasing rabbits or chipmunks or something. The woods are heaven to a house dog. There's no need to run and talk to the sheriff. You know that thing, Good afternoon, Sheriff. My dog is missing. It's a white poodle. Dogs run off all the time. Folk around here don't get too concerned. There's no big animals hereabouts. Huh. And what's that howling? Only howling I ever heard was a coyote. And that was a good many years ago. Well, do you think you could keep a lookout for him, please? Pierre won't starve out there. He'll be back just like a man with his tail between his legs. <laughs> you don't believe that, dear? I'd like to, Mrs. O. It's just that there's something so sinister about these woods. Every night I've been hearing this howling. Well, it's probably just owls. The woods are full of them. <laughs> Sounds so evil, though. Things always sound scarier at night. Why, Mr. Old Snorri scares the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Don't let it worry you. I know, it's probably nothing. You're probably right. Who used to live in the cottage? Oh, a lovely couple. She was a dear. Nothing was too much trouble for her. Then one day they just up and left. Never said a word. I still miss them. Well, it's time you were off. It's gonna get dark and forests are tricky things. I've noticed you don't drive. No. Doctor's orders. <laughs> well, you better be off. Thank you for listening. All right. I'll see ya. Right? Bye. Who was she asking after? Help the couple that had the cottage before them. Oh. Sorry. I thought I, I thought it was a Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just I thought you were somebody else. You're going back to your cottage? Yeah. If you go that way across a swing bridge, it's much quicker for you. Thanks.
is not Tondo. What is it? Something's following me. What are you? Are, what are you talking something's about? Something's following me out there. <laughs> hey, Marie. What in the hell happened? I found Pierre. I found just this hand, and then something was following me through the woods. I just feel it. Marie, now calm down. Now come on, explain to me what happened. I was in the cave by the swing bridge, you know. Uh -huh. And then something was following me, Richard. I could feel him. He followed me all the way home. He's out there. I could feel him. All right, all right, come on. Come on, come on. Come, calm down. I'm gonna go see. No, Richard, don't go. It's don't okay. Wait. I'm gonna Richard, go see. Don't it's okay. Go I'm gonna make sure. There. Honey. It's okay. Don't leave me, Richard. Hi, are you Marie Adams? Yes. I'm Janice Hatch. I'm uh, here on vacation. Well, actually over at the Twin Forks Hotel. And I, I hope I'm not being too forward, but I'm a big fan of your books. And when I heard you were down here, I really wanted to meet you. Come on in. I just made some coffee. Come on. I'm not interrupting or anything? No, of course not. Don't be silly. Hello, Richard. I was just, uh, passing by, and I thought, well, I remembered that my wife wanted some artist supplies. So? It was a great book. But how do you keep all those characters and complicated events straight? Ah, uh, it's hard to explain. I see it in my mind. Almost as if it's real. Anything else? I thought maybe a present. Something uh, special. Something like this. You have very good taste. It's got great detail. Oh, I just love it here during the day. During the night, though. Uh... I get so scared. I keep hearing these sounds that really frighten me. It's probably because I'm just a city girl. What sounds? Well, it's like these howling sounds. Howling? Yeah. Have you heard that? Me? No. No, but a friend of mine used those same words. What, she heard it here? I'm not sure. Well, what? What'd she say? Well, until recently, I, I was a nun. I, 
I had a very close friend in the convent, Sister Ruth. She disappeared a year ago, last February. Two weeks later, the Mother Superior called me and said Sister Ruth had been found in Drago. She was almost incoherent and babbling on about finding the devil and the sound of bells and, and then the howling. She was never able to tell us what happened. She was very frail. She refused to eat, and a month ago, she died. I left the convent and came here. I had to find out what happened. Have you? All I know is the sheriff here said he found her wandering in the woods. And you think that Sister Ruth heard the same sounds as I did, right? I don't know. But she used those same words. Janice, do you mind if I helped you find out what happened? Thanks for my present. I love it. It's beautiful. See, you went back to the big bad wolf again, huh? Hey, I picked it up. I'm just kidding. Thank you. I have something I got to show you. What? I found this. I didn't imagine it, Richard. Honey, I practically searched the whole area on my knees. And this is all I could find. The light can play tricks on you, and you've got to admit this does look like a dog's head. You think he's still alive, then? Let's hope so. You don't know what bit you, huh? No. Your ankle's starting to swell a little bit. OK, is that too tight, Paula? No, that feels okay. fine. You a doctor? God, no. I did do you in medical school, though. I qualify for a bandage, but that's about it. You guys aren't from around here, are you? No, New York, driving and hiking through California. John's idea of a hike is a forced march. <laughs> we came to see the bell tower in Drago. The bell tower? Yeah. It's a replica of a 16th century bell tower from Europe, and the bell is the original. Quite a history behind it. Evidently, the bell was rung to summon the townspeople, and when they were all inside, the tower was burned down. Apparently, there were no survivors. Is that a true story? Yeah, well, I read it in an old National Geographic. You okay, honey? I think we should be going now. 
Listen, my husband will be back soon. Why don't you guys just stick around and we'll drive you back into town? Look, thanks for your help, but my Chevy camper's parked close by. Okay. Make sure you see the doctor and Drago, though, okay? Will do. That could get infected. Thanks again. Listen, have you guys seen a little white poodle? I lost him a couple of days ago. I think he might be in the woods. No, afraid not. But if we see him, we'll bring him to you. Okay, hon? No problem. Did you hear that? Yeah, what is it? Maybe it's Marie's dog. Sounds like it's hurt. I'm gonna check it out. Boil the water, honey. Your man Don brung home the bacon. <laughs> I picked this up while I was in L.A. Thought it might make you feel a little bit safer. <laughs> All right. All right, I, I promise. Tomorrow night, I shoot a chicken instead. Tomorrow night, let's go out for dinner. <laughs> Did you hear that, Richard? Richard, you heard that, didn't you? Yeah, I heard it, but it was probably... No, no, no buts, Richard. You heard that. You see, I told you I didn't imagine it. Marie, it was probably a coyote. Maybe he's in heat. You coming up? I'm just gonna finish the dishes first. Now I know why they invented paper plates. I'll be up in a minute.
make this your last trip to L.A.? I don't know what they expect from you. I, you've practically done the whole job already. I know, Marie, but if that's what it takes, that's what it... That's what it takes. Look, Marie, if I get this job, it jumps me into a whole new league. And then they're going to be coming to see me. I know. Look, I'm sorry. Tell your friend Janice I, I don't mean to be rude. I got to go. I know. OK. I'll see you this afternoon, all right? You bet. Mm, I love you. Yeah. All right. Wish me luck. Good luck. Bye. Bye. I saw Sister Ruth last night. What? I know this is going to sound crazy. Maybe it is, but I saw her here, and the expression on her face was like something horrible was happening right here in my living room. Like, I don't know what. I told you I have quite an imagination. And there's something else, too. These hikers I met yesterday told me about the bell tower in Drago. Didn't you say something about Sister Ruth and the sound of bells? Bell is original from Europe, 16th century. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, nothing to see down there. Ah, uh, it's dangerous. Fire hazard. It's been condemned. The whole place is infested with termites. What was it for? A oh, fire alarm. They'd ring that bell when there was a fire and everybody would come running. A sight you wouldn't believe. Well, come on, girls. Don't get yourselves hurt down there. Who's that? That was Mrs. Ormstead. She owns a general store there. She's really nice. Stop! Hey, wait a minute. Where are you taking that camper? County impound. It's an abandoned no, vehicle. No, it's not. It belongs to some friends of mine. Ma'am, we found out on the forest road. The sheriff told me to haul it out of here. And that's what I'm doing. Where's the sheriff? You have a problem, ma'am? That camper there, I know who owns it. That's good, because no one else does. He's got no license plates, no papers. He's found up in the woods. Probably been there a week now. No, no, no. This couple I met yesterday, it's theirs. Well, then, your friends ain't got much respect for their own property. Because in this territory, we call it an abandoned vehicle. Excuse me, ma'am. I got a lot of work to do. Move it on out! What was all that about? Remember that couple I told you I met yesterday? They said they had a Chevy camper. Without license plates? Something's happened to them, I know it. Okay, look, you just hang out here, okay? And warn me if anybody comes around.
license plates. That camper did belong to my friends. I told Paula to see the doctor here. Let's see if she did. Oh, no. No young couple came by here. Perhaps they hitched a lift to Twin Forks Hospital. Thanks for your help, Doctor. Uh, sorry I couldn't do more. Doctor, about a year ago, you treated a nun. Her name was Sister Ruth. The sheriff said you might be able to give us some information about her. Yes, Sister Ruth. Terrible, terrible thing. She was found wandering in the woods, near Catatonic. In the woods? Hmm. The sheriff said she was found at my place, at Wilderness Cottage. Now, as I recall, the sheriff found her in the woods. Janice was a very close friend of hers, and I was reading about her case. Me being a writer and everything. Oh, of course. You're our visiting celebrity author. Well, if I can be of any more help, don't hesitate to stop by. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you mention Wilderness Cottage? Is it because you saw Sister Ruth there? Yeah, somehow Ruth and the cottage are connected. Yeah, hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, it's Marie. Tom, can you do me a favor? I'm working on a real mystery here. We'll talk about my health another time, okay? Just listen to me. You know that little friend of yours in the DA's office? If I give you a New York license number, could you find out whether it belongs to a John Simmons or Paula Johnson? Sure. Did Sister Ruth say anything when you saw her in the hospital? I couldn't make any sense out of what you were saying. I barely recognized her. The only thing she said was, well, it sounded like we are all in fear. I don't know what terrified her so, but the devil must have touched her. Because after that, she never became normal again. When you found her in the hospital, did they say whether or not they found her in the woods or in the cottage? I thought I can't remember. Marie thinks she might have been in the cottage she's renting. Well, that I don't know. I remember she was suffering from exposure in the forest. Maybe she was in the woods and sought refuge in your cottage. Father, there's no church in Drago. Your parish here in Twin Forks must be the closest one. Do any of them ever come here to your services? No. Isn't that unusual? It is strange. But the people from Drago are a community unto themselves. They have been for as long as I remember. Well, I'm here if you need me. Are you going to tell Richard what we're doing? What, are you kidding? He thinks I'm on the edge already.
it was a dream, Marie. A bad dream. Oh, All right, let's do it like I said. Okay. Squeeze it up right in your arm like that. And look through the sight. Got it. Give it a shot. Line it up with the thing right in your shoulder, and you look right through the side. Hand to God, I guess. I guess. I'd love to be able to live in a place like this. How did you find it? I lucked out. I ran into the developer that owns the place. Funny guy. Guess it's been empty for about a year. February, I think. Did he say you lived in it before? Some old couple. Why? What are you two up to? No reason. Just curious. Doesn't that seem like quite a coincidence? I mean, Sister Ruth arrives at about the same time the couple leaves. Uh, I'm gonna run into a town where low on supplies. Oh, you want me to come with you? No, no. It's a one-man job. I might stop in the bar and grab a drink. Okay.
I shot it at Wilfred. Richard. It was outside. Give me the gun. I'm gonna go look. Give me the gun. Stay here. Okay. Did you see anything? Janice, it's all coming apart. I can't even believe what I see anymore. I believe you. I checked back into the history of Drago. The bell in that tower came from a village called Draga, a village in Romania. Do you know why all the villagers died in that fire? The fire that burned down the bell tower? People in a nearby community burnt them alive. They believed one of the villagers from Drago was a werewolf. A werewolf, Janice? Oh, come on. It sounds crazy, but that's what they believed. You know, the church still accepts the existence of the devil. And werewolves, which are another form of the devil, have been recorded for centuries. Janice, I shot a wolf, OK? Or something that looked like a wolf. It wasn't some devil. But, Marie, but if there had been some form of a werewolf, and if Sister Ruth saw... OK, just stop it, all right? Just stop it right there. Whatever caused Sister Ruth to lose it was real, all right? Don't you get it? It wasn't some mythical, mystical devil incarnate. Janice, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I just... I don't know anything anymore. More questions about Sister Ruth? No, no, it's about me. I haven't been able to sleep very much, and I thought maybe you could refill my Valium prescription. That should be easy to fix. Doctor, I shot at a wolf last night. <gasps> Marie, are you sure? I'm positive. Well, I'm not exactly positive I shot at a wolf, but something tried to attack me last night. Uh, I've never heard of a wolf in these parts. Perhaps it was a raccoon. They're the most persistent scavengers around. Uh, it can be pretty mean at night. Easy to mistake. That had to be the biggest raccoon I've ever seen. Shadows do things. If you haven't been sleeping, perhaps your mind is, well, probably overreacted. I've been having some pretty wild dreams. I even thought that the house was haunted by the people who used to live there. I saw them. It was like they were trying to warn me about something. Don't worry. There's nothing in the forest or in your house to harm you. Well, no, I think I ought to warn you that your stairs have already claimed a victim. The previous resident fell down them and damaged his hip. Is that why they left Drago? Hmm. He needed specialist treatment. 
Now, they went off to some famous Jewish hospital in New York. Take one of those. Half hour before going to bed, huh? Thank you, Doctor. I think I needed your advice as much as I needed these. Uh, hello? Tom, hi, it's Marie. Any luck with that license plate? Uh, yes. But it wasn't registered under, uh, what were the names you gave me? Johnson and Simmons. It was registered under the name of Brooks. Tom, listen. Let me ask you something serious now, okay? Don't laugh. Do you believe in werewolves? Yeah, only in the late show, though. You're not being very serious. Well, I certainly hope you're not. Look, is this the real mystery you're working on? No, of course not. I just asked because there's a legend about werewolves. Ah, oh, a werewolf story. Well, maybe that Tom, is a good idea. Tom, I am on vacation. <laughs> okay, Tom, thanks. Bye. Bye. We struck out. The license plates weren't theirs. I think it's time I talked to Richard. Are you sure that's what you want to do? Nope. How much more am I supposed to take? You put together a few bad dreams and a frustrated lesbian, and you come up with howling werewolves and demented nuns. Christ, you even involved Tom on my back. Richard, I know that this sounds very strange. No, this doesn't sound strange, Marie. It is strange. You know, I blame myself for this. I really do. I blame myself for going down to L.A. and leaving you here alone. You were supposed to be resting, Marie. You weren't supposed to be running around with Janice like a couple of Ghostbusters. No wonder your dreams are getting worse. Richard, did you hear that? <sighs> That's it, Marie. That is it. Tomorrow, I'm taking you back to L.A., and we're getting you to see a shrink. Where are you going? I'm going out, Marie. I need some air, all right? Werewolves. Doctor. Don't go out there. It's still out there. Eyes. He'll be okay. A few scratches, bump on the head, mild concussion. But 
His shoulder. The bite marks. Bite marks? There weren't any bite marks. Just a few scratches. Dr. Richard was attacked by a wolf. He fell down a gully, Marie. Excuse me. Your shoulder. You said you were attacked by a wolf. A wolf, Marie? I fell down a gully. Onto some rocks. It's just a scratch. Last night, he told me that he was attacked by a wolf. He was probably a little delirious from the fall. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Well... Goodbye. Bye. Sorry to keep you waiting. Father, do you have a book on exorcism? Exorcism, Janice? Yes, the Roman Rituals book. Sister Ruth asked me about that book. Did you lend it to her? No. And it's not here. Maybe she just took it. You don't think she was planning to do an exorcism? Oh, no. No, she would know, as you know, only priests can perform exorcisms. You know, I don't ever recall seeing that book again. Oh, by the way, I have the Bible Sister Ruth left at the church here. May I keep it, Father? Don't see why not. Thank you. It means a great deal to me. Richard, what are you doing? I'm going out. You should be resting in bed. It's okay, Marie. I feel great. Look, Janice, this whole Sister Ruth thing, I should never have said that I would help you. I had a nervous breakdown in L.A. I couldn't tell what was real and what was dreams. Last night, I even imagined that Richard was attacked by a wolf. My doctor sent me here to rest, and instead, I'm trying to solve some mystery that probably isn't. Are you saying that, that you imagined everything that's happened? Dreams, that's, that's all they were. It was nothing supernatural, no ESP. They were just dreams, that's it. And the vision of Sister Ruth? I, I don't know. All I know is that Richard fell down a gully and banged himself up. 
and I convinced myself that he was attacked by a wolf. I even bandaged the bite on his shoulder. It took both Richard and the doctor to convince me that there was no bite. It was all in my mind. Tom. Hi, Tom. Come on in. Come on. Janice, this is Tom Billings. So you're Janice? Yeah. Did I interrupt something? No, no, I, I gotta go. I um, have to get back to the hotel at Twin Forks. Well, bye, Marie. Bye, Janice. Uh, is this something I said? No, I said too much. So, the real mystery was unreal, huh? Yep, I'm afraid so. I got all confused and I brought you up here for no reason. I'm sorry. You son of a bitch! Get out. Richard, Tom didn't mean anything by that. Get out. Talk to you about Marie. Come on in. It was all my fault. I, I was trying to find out what happened to my friend, Sister Ruth. I got Marie involved and put all kinds of thoughts into her head. You mean that werewolf nonsense? That and many other things. But what about the license plates? It was all part of it. Yeah. She even got the names wrong. The license place belonged to somebody called Brooks. Brooks? But that couldn't be. That was Sister Ruth's last name. Sister Ruth Brooks. Well, then... That old couple... that rented the cottage... father. Thank you. Sure. That's why Sister Ruth came here, to see her parents. She'd lost contact with them when she became a nun. She must have found out they were in Drago. Well, what about the license plate? Don't you see? They never left town. Everybody we talked to said they went back to New York. But why would they say that? Because they're trying to hide something. Something happened to them, and Sister Ruth must have discovered it. And now you and Marie come digging around. It sounds like Ruth's parents were murdered. And probably the hitchhikers as well. But I still don't understand why. The townspeople are trying to hide some secret. Marie saw it in her visions. She's in danger. Look, I'm going to tell Marie and Richard to leave Drago tonight. I'm coming with you. What do you think it's any different for you? I'm going to drive you back to your hotel. I want you to pack and leave. Today. Come on. We are all in fear. What? Nothing. Just something Sister Ruth said. Good to get back to L.A., won't it? Guess I'm really just a city girl at heart. I'll pack right after dinner, okay? I can't go yet. 
Why not? I just can't. Well, when then? I don't know when. Christ, Marie, we stop hassling me. The devil's hatred for God has turned man into a habitation for demons. Demons. Werewolves. We're in fear. We're all in fear. We are all in fear.
Ruth. Ruth was trying to warn us. The tower! Run! Side. You must set it on fire. What about you? I must ring the bell to summon the werewolves. Go now, quick, before they get both of us. Go! Another sleepless night And I don't want to dream Now no. I don't need to close my eyes To see my destiny There's a darkness in my soul I know what waits for me Something And the truth I have to face is life. 